your Christian names are still an insufferable barrier. That is all. <laughs> Christian names? Is that all? Well, I'm going to be Christian this afternoon. For my sake, are you ready to do this horrible thing? I am. So please be you ready to face your ordeal? I am. <laughs> How absurd to talk about the inequality of the sexes, where men are infinitely beyond us. We are. And when this occurs, we will know absolutely nothing about it. Darling, darling. Let me practice. Gwendolyn, what does this mean? <laughs> Merely that I am engaged to Mr. Worthing, Mama. Come here. <coughs> Sit down. Sit down immediately. Hesitation of any kind is a sign of a little bit of a young physical weakness in the old. <laughs> a kind sir of my father from the flight for our just today, whose confidence of purchase by means of a small coin. I told her once by a luggage check. But of course, we were clearly understand that all communication between myself and my daughter must cease immediately. On this point, as indeed on, on all points, I am firm. I'm engaged to be literary to go into the lady Rackham. You are nothing of a kind, sir.
I'm in love with Cecily and I guess, but I don't hear problems about any social possibilities. Never speak disrespectfully to Zaya. Only people can get into it for that. But dear child, you know that I also guys not think about his debts to depend upon. But I do not approve of virtue in marriages. When I married Lord Bracknell, I am nothing. I am no virtue of any kind, but I never dream for a moment of a life that to stand in my way. I would well suppose I must give them consent. Thank you, Lord Bracknell. Uh, is this what you may me? <laughs> Thank you, Lord Bracknell. He also addresses me as part of the of the future. Thank you, Auntie Esther. Thank you, Auntie Esther. The marriage of things uh, had better take place quite soon. Thank you, Auntie Esther. Thank you. To speak, to speak frankly, I'm not favoring of engagements. They give people the opportunity of finding each other's characters before the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's never advisable. I beg your pardon for interrupting you, Lady Bracknell, but this marriage is quite out of question. I am Miss Cartier's guardian, and she cannot legally marry without my consent until she comes of age. And that consent, I absolutely decline to give. Upon what grounds, may I ask, Algernon is extremely, I may almost say, ostentatiously, a little young man. He has nothing, but he has everything. What more can one desire? <laughs> it pains me very much to speak frankly about your nephew to you, Aunt Augusta. But the fact of the matter is, I don't at all approve of Algernon's moral character. I suspect I'm being untruthful. Untruthful? My nephew Algernon? <laughs> Impossible! He's observing it! I'm afraid there can be no possible doubt about the matter. This afternoon, during my temporary absence in London, on an important question of romance, Algernon obtained admission to my house under the false pretense of being my brother. Under an assumed name, he drank, I've just been informed by my butler, an entire pint bottle of my special Perrier Jouet Brut 89 wine that I'm especially reserving for myself. <laughs> Continuing with his disgraceful deceptions, he succeeded in the course of the afternoon in alienating the affections of my only ward. He subsequently stayed to tea, devouring every single muffin. <laughs> and what makes his conduct all the more heartless is he knew from the start I don't have a brother, that I've never had a brother, and I don't intend on having a brother, not even of any kind. I distinctly told him so myself yesterday afternoon. Uh, well, out of this world, after careful consideration, I decided to reconsider my decision. It's extremely kind of you, Lady Bracknell. My own decision on the subject is unalterable. I decline to give my consent. Dear child, come over here. Uh, how old are you? Well, I'm only really only 18, but I'm into 20, and you have it. You're a perfect writer. Right? It makes you so slight, all trade you. Well, that is the only thing that you can make you so slight, all trade you. Indeed, no woman should be ever acting at that age. It looks so kindly. Uh, 18, but I'm mean, into 20, is so making you crazy. Well, you will be not very long before we have to age the tree for restraints of two to it. So I don't think your guardian's consent is, after all, a matter of any good. Very excuse me, Lady Brown, for interrupting you again. But according to the terms of the will, Miss Carter does not come legally of age until she is 35. 35 is a very attractive age. Learn the society is full of the path of the high school path of their own free choice between 35 years.
along with food and secular, I will return to the church at once. Indeed, I have just been informed by the curate that for the last hour and a half, his prison has been waiting for me in the vestry. Yes, Yes, Lisa Rackmill, I'm on my way to join you. Oh, pray that I'll be taken from your moment. Is this Miss Prism a female of a repellent aspect, remotely connected with education? She is the most cultivated of ladies and a very picture of respectability. It's always your same person. what position she holds in your household? I'm a celibate, madam. <laughs> Miss Prism has, for the last four years, been Miss Archie's esteemed governess and valued companion. In spite of all I hear her, I must see her once. Let her be sent forward. She approaches. She is now. <laughs> <laughs> I was told you expected me in the best year to do it. I've been waiting for you for an hour and three quarters. Prison! Come here, prison! Prison! Where is that baby? Two days ago, prison, you left the Rapnes house, number 104, offered across from the street, in charge of a preamble that contained a baby of the male sex. You never returned. Two weeks later, a thorough elaborate investigators of Metropolitan Police, the preamble was found remotely substantial itself in a remote corner of Bayswater. It contains a manuscript of three volume novels, but the baby was not there! Prison, where is that baby? Lady Brackfield, I admit with shame that I did not know. I only wish I did. The plain facts of the case are these. On the morning of the day that you've mentioned, a day that's forever bred in my memory, I prepared as usual to take the baby out of this grandmother here. I had also with me a somewhat old but contagious handbag, which I had intended to place a manuscript of work of fiction that I had written during some of my fear of my hours. From the moment of mental abstraction, for which I can never forgive myself, I deposited the manuscript in the basket and placed the baby in the shoe. But where did you place the handbag? Um... Miss Prism, this is a matter of no small importance to me. I insist on knowing where you deposited the handbag that contained the infant. I left it in one of the cloakrooms or one of the larger rails. Which railway station? Um, it's Torian. Torian? Yes. Yeah. 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 Underneath the cloakroom, the cloakroom. I must retire to my room for a moment. Gwendolyn, you will wait for me here. If you're not too long, I'll wait here all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Like a brother in all your life. 
Well, not till today, old boy. I 